Hi guys, it's me Anne-Marie and in this video I want to compare different types of foil you can use to gild book edges. So first off we have Couture Creations, Go Press and Foil. This foil is heat activated and it comes in an array of colors and prints. Next up we have Deco Foil from the brand iCraft. This foil you can use on fabric and on paper. And last but not least we have a foil I bought from a supplier on Amazon. It doesn't have a brand, but the supplier called it Tool Parts DIY Transfer Hot Stamping Paper Hot Selling Hot Foil Stamping Color Foil. For this project you will need an iron, PVA glue, sanding paper in 180, 240 and 400 grit, and you will also need some kind of a book press. I made this one myself, and if you don't want to drill holes you could use wood clamps to press the book in between two pieces of wood. I recommend using planks that are at least half an inch thick. Also, I forgot to mention, but you'll need talcum powder for this type of book gilding. For the first foil, I'm going to start with gilding a paper bag. If you are new to gilding or painting book edges, I recommend starting with paper bags. They are way easier to work with. So for this paper bag, I will be using deco foil from iCraft. It comes in sheets. You get 5 sheets per package. This foil has a matte and a shiny side. The matte side has a thin layer of glue. You put this foil with the matte side onto paper. First up, you need to prep the book. We start by putting it in a press so we can sand the edges. Use 180 grit at first, then 240 and finish off with 400 grit. After sanding the edges, make sure you don't touch the book edges you just sanded. Oil from your skin might prevent the foil from adhering to the paper, so make sure you don't touch any sides you have sanded. After sanding the edges, use a clean, dry brush to remove dust. Use another clean and dry brush to apply a thin layer of talcum powder onto the book edge. Make a one part water and a one part PVA glue mixture. It's important to water down the glue so you don't glue the pages together during this process. With a clean brush, apply a thin layer of glue. The foil won't always stick to the edge. When this happens, apply another thin layer of glue. Never use too much glue or you'll have a sticky mess and you won't be able to pry the pages apart without tearing them. After placing down the foil onto the book edge, I would recommend cutting off the excess foil before you start ironing it. Otherwise, it will be in the way when you are ironing the edge. Start the iron on the lowest setting first and adjust the temperature slowly. When I had the iron on the wool setting, it basically melted the foil, so don't iron on a too high temperature. Have patience and iron gently. Don't press down the iron overly hard or you might ruin the foil this way. After ironing the edge for about 5 minutes, start peeling the plastic. Do this slowly at first because there might be some parts of foil that did not adhere to the book edge. In this case, you just place the plastic bag over the book and iron it some more. So my camera just died when I peeled off the plastic, but this is the result. Just do the same with the other two edges. So again, stand down the edge, remove any dust, apply some talcum powder. As you can see, it's a tiny amount of talcum powder on there, it's barely visible. Try not to overdo it or you might create a paste that's a whole other mess you don't want to deal with. And then again, mix one part water with one part PVA glue. Your glue should have a milky consistency. It should not be too runny or too thick. If it's too thick, you won't be able to pry the book pages apart. And if it's too runny, the foil won't stick. So find the perfect balance to get the foil to stick to the pages without uh, gluing the pages shut. I rub down the foil gently with my fingers by doing this, I try to remove any air bubbles before I start ironing. I'm really struggling to get the foil off the plastic and onto the book edge. And if this happens to you, just try to iron it a bit longer and if it really doesn't want to come off the plastic, then unfortunately you will have to remove it and sand the book edge again. You will need to apply another layer of talcum powder and glue and just stick another piece of foil on there. You basically just need to start over. It's less of a headache to fix it that way than trying to iron it out. 
because I really tried here, it took me half an hour and I could not get the last tiny piece of foil to adhere to the book edge. After you have removed the plastic successfully, start wiggling the book a bit. This way it will be a lot easier to get the pages to unstick. The talcum powder really does help to open up the pages again. So next up I have a hardcover book. For this book I have decided to try out the Couture Creations foil. This foil comes on a roll. To gild hardcovers you will need to protect the book boards by making a kind of a dust jacket. Cut the sanding paper to size so you won't damage the inside of the book board. And again, press it down in some sort of a book press and just as with a paperback, sand the edges. Remove the dust from the sanded edges, apply a thin layer of talcum powder, apply a thin layer of the glue mixture, cut a piece of foil, I recommend cutting the foil slightly bigger, this way it might be easier to place the foil onto the book edge. Since I'm dealing with such a thin hardcover, I decided to use my tiny iron. There was just no way I would be able to iron the edges with a regular iron. This is something you need to consider when you choose the book you want to gild. With a paperback you can iron the edges and it really doesn't matter how tiny the book is. Just like with a regular iron, I iron down the foil. Since this iron does not have a way to regulate the temperature, I had to be very careful not to let the iron to overheat. I needed to unplug the iron a few times to get it to cool down a bit, otherwise I would have melted the plastic. That's something to consider if you're thinking of buying a tiny iron. Try to find one with a temperature setting. So this is the reason why I use a makeshift dust jacket to protect the book boards while gilding. This foil really sticks on there and there's no way you would be able to scratch it off the book boards without damaging the book. So, although the foil stuck onto the edge fairly well, the glue did not glue the pages together. And this is all because of the talcum powder I used. It really helped with preventing the book pages from sticking together too much. It is really easy to pry the pages open. It took me less than 8 minutes to go through the whole book and open up all the pages. And now we're going on to the last foil I'm going to use in this video. It's the brandless foil I got from Amazon. This foil is a tiny bit more flimsy. It also shrinks a bit more when it comes in contact with heat. I needed to use the lowest setting on my iron as not to burn the foil. I must admit it was late at night and I got a bit lazy with the sanding. So there were some air pockets that caused the foil not to adhere as well. To fix this I needed to sand down the edge again and basically redo this edge. Just spare yourself the extra work and sand your book thoroughly enough so you won't have to redo the edge. As you can see here it's really iridescent, it has a subtle rainbow hint to it. I really like this foil. For this side I decided to use a tiny iron because it was easier than trying to get a regular iron in such a tight spot. This is really something you need to consider. If you don't have a tiny iron, it might be a lot harder to gild the edges of a hardcover. Without bending the book boards all the way back, you won't be able to get the iron in there. And by bending the book boards, you are essentially damaging the book a bit, so I would not recommend doing that. And now on to my thoughts on the foils I used today. So with the Couture Creation foil, I didn't have any issues with getting the foil to stick to the paper. It it went on there without any problems and the end result was quite shiny and beautiful. I basically cannot say anything bad about this foil. The deco foil from iCraft was amazing. It's a bit sturdier than the other two foils, which made it a lot easier to handle. The end result looks great. I had almost no issues with getting the foil to stick to the book edge and I would definitely use this foil in the future. And next up is the foil without the brand. This foil was a bit flimsier than the deco foil. It also shrank a bit more than the other foils did. The iCraft foil actually did not shrink at all when it came in contact with heat, which made it a lot easier to work with and to get an even layer onto the edge. With this one you need to be a bit more careful. I really like this foil, it's just a bit harder to work with. I don't know if I would recommend this foil for one-time users since you get so much of it. So after using 
these different types of foil I really don't think it matters that much which brand of foil you decide to buy. As long as it's a hot stamping or a heat activated foil, the iCraft foil is easier to use but it's also a bit more expensive. The brandless roll is the cheapest one but it's a bit flimsier and harder to use. And the Couture Creations is right in the middle. It's not as expensive as foil from iCraft and it also seems to have a bigger assortment of foils you can choose from. It is not as easy to use as iCraft foil but it's still easy enough. Personally I would buy the foil based on the pattern or color and not so much based on the brand. Although iCraft foil is a quality foil, I don't think that I would be buying this foil for a simple gilding job. Simply because it's a lot more expensive than the other foils out there. And it also doesn't seem to have that huge of an assortment of foils to choose from. I hope this answers the question of which foil you should use. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter as long as it's a heat activated foil or a hot stamping foil. If you have any other questions or suggestions, just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Until next time, bye!